Some consider it to be one of the best, if not the best, science fiction films ever made. Released in 1951, the film was a vivid representation of life in America at the time, with the ongoing threat of communism and the potential invasion by the Reds, which in effect was saying that anything different had to be feared, and yet that key message has carried over even to today. Yes, we're talking about the day the Earth stood still, and this is Sign 5. The Day the Earth Stood Still was based on the short story Farewell to the Master by Harry Bates, which first appeared in the October 1940 issue of Astounding Science Fiction. The film was unique amongst its science fiction contemporaries, as the arrival of an alien to Earth who was not an antagonist or a threat was almost unheard of and certainly untraditional for the genre. Set in Washington DC, one of the most frightening events imaginable occurs upon a totally unsuspecting world, the sudden arrival of a flying saucer. With the whole planet in immense fear, the moment of truth quickly arrives when the hatch opens and out steps Klaatu, Earth's first alien visitor. It truly is a case of what could possibly go wrong. What's interesting to note is that even though the movie was made over 70 years ago, the depiction of an alien landing on Earth and the subsequent reaction by the public, the media and especially the military would still be exactly the same today. Central to the story are the two main protagonists. Helen Benson, portrayed by Patricia Neal, along with her son Bobby, and the alien Klaatu, played by Michael Rennie. After a difficult first few moments on Earth, Klaatu, being human in appearance, is able to walk the streets and mingle within the community, whilst being hunted by the authorities. Companioning the issue further is the public's hostile reaction to him, because they fear what he represents, despite having no understanding as to why he has come to Earth in the first place. Whilst hiding among the populace in a boarding house, Klaatu befriends the young Bobby and to a degree his mother Helen. Although Klaatu's mission to Earth is one of peace, he does have an important message to deliver which is significant to the future of humanity. In what could be seen as one of the film's poetic ironies, Klaatu's desire to meet with all world leaders in one location to deliver his message is quickly nullified as he discovers that some world leaders won't attend such a meeting unless it's held in their own country. This goes to emphasise how, even in the face of an alien visitor from another planet coming to our world for the first time, that some are still unable to move past their own xenophobic hostilities and political ideology for the greater good. What makes the film fascinating to watch is that the classic 1950s tropes of female scream queens, masculine heroic men and romantic love interests are all absent from the story. This not only gives it a very strong sense of credibility, but it ensures the audience remains focused on the key plot points and character moments and isn't diluted by unnecessary distractions. Under the outstanding direction of Robert Wise and the great musical score by Bernard Herrmann, there was one aspect of the film which fascinated audiences more than any other, and this was Klaatu's travelling companion and police robot, Gort. Standing at nearly 8 feet tall, the enormous, silent and highly imposing machine won fans over, not only by its sheer simplicity and basic design, but what it represented which was power, intimidation and effectively a no-nonsense attitude. It's for this reason Gort still rates as one of the all-time favourite robots by sci-fi fans. Although no one knew it at the time, the film spawned one of the greatest quotes ever spoken by an alien on screen. Gort, Klaatu, Barada, Nikto. Now fans, philosophers, even linguistic experts have been studying that phrase for decades trying to analyse and understand its intricate meaning. Yet Edmund North who created the language apparently cooked it up out of nowhere because he just thought it sounded good. So who should see the film? Fortunately being made in the 1950s means it's aimed at audiences of all ages and is worth watching with the family as each of the characters brings something to the story. Despite being released all the way back in 1951, the Day the Earth Stood Still is considered an iconic film from the golden era of science fiction. Fortunately the film was met with critical acclaim and still ranks highly on all best of science fiction movie lists mainly because it's a compelling film which contains a poignant message. So if you haven't seen the film before then you're in for a treat, but be aware it is a black and white movie, the editing and the pace is rather slow and of course it doesn't feature all the spectacular visual effects that you would find in a modern day movie. Yet the characters and the storyline are still as relevant today as they were back then, which leads to that old adage, the more things change, the more they stay the same. And for that reason alone, it's well worth watching.